Hello, Gaston County. Welcome to episode number 68 of Gaston's Great, a podcast highlighting some of the great things happening in and around Gaston County. I'm your host, Stephen Long, and we are coming to you once again from the international headquarters of GSM Services right here in downtown Gastonia as we continue looking forward to some great discussions in the coming weeks and months. We seem to believe in discussing more of the reasons why Gaston's great. We are highlighting another great organization um, or building, or I'm not sure exactly how to describe this, but it, it's something that's, uh, uh, that I'm really looking forward to hearing about. We have Fred Glenn and Wendy Cawthon with us today. Fred is the president of the Baltimore Village School Board of Directors and also the owner of the school. And Wendy is the secretary uh, of the board. So Fred and Wendy, it's great to have you on and welcome to the podcast. Thanks for Thank having you. us. Absolutely. So we're going to get right to it and start with you, uh, Mr. Glenn. So I'm sure our listeners are going to hear a little bit about yourself. Um, you said maybe just start there and then we'll get into some specific questions about, about the school. Okay, my name is Fred Glenn. I was born and raised in the village of Baltimore on the side of the mountain, of Kramer Mountain, and on the banks of the South Fork River. Uh, as a kid growing up there, as a young teenager, I learned to fish in the South Fork River, hunt squirrels on Kramer Mountain, okay. which now in all those nice homes up there where we were hunting up there, <laughs> squirrel hunting as a teenager. And growing up in that village, it was all-inclusive, uh, and the reason I'm so passionate about the school is because my mother and my aunt went to school there, okay. that one-room school, and uh, it became a s community center for us uh, in the 50s, and that was our theater also, you know, where they would bring movies during the time, you know, segregation, well, that was our theater, right? because we couldn't go to movies anywhere else, so they would bring movies to us, uh, and we would watch movies there and became a community center, and when uh, Santa Claus was coming over and Fred Kirby during the Christmas holidays. and Gosh, Fred Kirby. And, I remember yeah, Fred Kirby. Yeah, Fred Kirby. Uh, <laughs> and, uh, that, that singing cowboy. Yes. And uh, so it was so exciting, you know, growing up in that little village. And that's why I'm so passionate of saving the school and, uh, and, and the village itself. So that was something about me. And I, and I went off to school and went to Vietnam. I worked in the mill in Cremerton and... It was just a home, you know. Right. Well, I mean, it's like I'm like I was like a hummingbird. Uh, you might say a monarch butter butterfly. You know, <laughs> I went halfway around the world almost, but I came back home. Yes, sir. You know, so this is basically this is who I am. All right. Well, thank you for sharing that, Wendy. What about you? you? Can tell us a little bit about yourself and maybe how you got involved with the organization. Then we'll let Mr. Glenn get into some, so some more details. I'm Wendy Cawthon. I have lived in Cramerton for about 17 years now, and my husband was the mayor over there for a, a period of time. And I'm not really sure how the Baltimore School came on my radar because it is okay. hidden. I mean, it is a little gem that's just tucked away. But at one point, there was a new development coming in. And it was surrounding the entire Baltimore village. And I heard about the school, and I panicked a little bit. And I started reaching out to everyone I could think of that knew anything about the school ran across Dr. Pierre How or okay. Pierre Crawford from Center Baptist Church, and he had also started the process of trying to preserve the school. So that was six, seven years ago, and from then we've just been moving forward, and now Mr. Glenn's like family to me, and I am, I am ready to see this get completed for him and for the rest of the people that live in Baltimore. All right, very good. So um, – we're going to have listeners, I'm sure, who don't know what the Baltimore Village School is, don't know much about the organization, or maybe even where it is. I know there's going to be a lot of people listening who have driven right past you know, the road. You know, when you come and stay from New Hope Road you know, into Cramerton, you know, it's right there on the right, right before you yeah. get, I guess, to before you get to the entrance to Cramer Mountain neighborhood. Um, so just go ahead and just share, you know, the, anything you want to share about the organization, the school, how this came about that you you got you decided to um, to buy it and just just okay this is what our good. listeners want to hear about a good question uh, it, it was tucked back in there like it's been preserved for about a hundred years right. and a lot of people didn't even know it was back there those those homes and uh, like I say it was all inclusive and when I heard that the fire department was training and they were going to do a controlled burn 
told Anna and Mrs. Uh, Mrs. Uh, Donina Watson Fowles called me. Okay, and she was she grew up there uh, in the neighborhood. She said, and she was living there at the time in sort of fire department training in the school. So she called me and said, Fred, you won't believe what's happening mm. over here. I said, What, uh, uh, what, Donina? She said, They're gonna burn the school down. I said, Oh no. Uh, so I got with a realtor, and we had to. He did the research on who owned the school. Burlington Industry, which is headquarters mm. in Greensboro, owned the school and the land adjacent That's to the interesting. school. interesting. So we got in touch with them and worked out a deal where I could, where I could purchase the school. And I had, as a drill sergeant, um, after doing a tour in Vietnam, and I'll make a little, give you a little story about it. Sure, uh, please. How I kind of coordinate this with the school. Uh, I would always teach my trainees you better know the four life saving steps, okay? Especially when you're going to Vietnam. Is that stop the bleeding, clear the airways, treat and pre- treat a second chest wound, and tr- treat and prevent shock. What I had to do is stop the bleeding, <laughs> okay? I had to stop the bleeding from them burning down the school. Didn't have no idea of how what I was going to do or how I was going to renovate the school, but I had to stop the bleeding. That was the first thing. And then I had to wait till the medics. Get there, <laughs> and these are the medics. <laughs> I, once I the medic, the medic with the cape. The, the medic with the cape. Yeah, I had to wait for <laughs> the medic. Yeah, and that's to to uh, to assist in in stopping. Right. Uh, the what, what what was the time frame when this was roughly 20, about twenty years? Okay. Yeah. So, so that's when. So when was the that when was when you heard first about the control burn? Was that was that was the early two thousand? Okay, thank uh, yeah, you, thank you. Yeah. Just getting the time reference then. Yeah, yeah, early, yeah, early two thousand. And uh, so you know, a great team came along, great medics came along, and got the patient stabilized, and <laughs> and here we are, uh, trying to get it back on its feet. Patient. So, so what is the. Um, the specific, is there a mission of the organization, something specifically trying to do, or is it simply just renovating the school? Or, or what, 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 what can you share kind of about so what, are you, what is it that you're trying to accomplish? Our maybe? ultimate goal is to preserve and restore the school restore back to what it Restore is a better word, was. yes, thank you. Um, and we're also going to use it as a small museum of the Baltimore Village, the Baltimore School, and how the African-American community served in Bramerton. Um, but it's also going to be a community center because that's part of its history too. So it'll be available for yoga classes, art classes, you know, poetry readings, whatever you want to do there, it'll be available to use for that as well. Is it fair to say that obviously this, your, your organization specifically is about the, the Baltimore Village School, but it seems, it feels like it's more, uh, maybe more, more encompassing of the vi- village itself as well, right? Well, it's not specifically step. just about the school. The village is the bigger goal this okay. is just something we can do right now right and that will take on the, the whole village at at a later time <laughs> so looking 20 years back to now when was the actual organiz i saw recent it looks like rec- just recently you i guess you gained your 501c3 yes status. In May. okay i knew that was relatively recent when i was doing looking at some research on on the, the website which is terrific by the way um what you new know, when did the organization kind of get started when you, when you said, okay, we got to have this group of people together and this is what we're going to do and how we, how we're and how, going about how we're going to do this. So Mr. Glenn stopped the bleeding and by stopping the bleeding, he boarded up the windows So the original windows would stay in as good a condition as they, they could. He fixed the roof. So it was no longer leaking because there was a tree through the roof. Oh, wow. Okay. Um, and, and then it kind of sat vacant for, I don't know, 10 10, 15 years. Okay. And then Dr. Crawford, Mr. Glenn, and myself, that's five, six, seven years ago is when we really started looking at, okay, what do we have to do to save this? So um, we've been processing it for that long, <laughs> and this last year is when we finally found the right group of people to help us form this board and move forward. So how many people are involved, you know, typically uh, right now, and, and maybe, maybe who are some of the other uh, individuals you've got uh, helping you out with this? So we have seven people on the board. Okay. We've got Mr. Glenn, Mr. Glenn's wife, Ernestine, Dr. Crawford, um, John Howard, who is a planner out of Charlotte, okay. uh, Melvina Booker, who 
has lived in the Baltimore neighborhood her entire life. Anita Helms, who her husband is a commissioner for the town of Cramerton. And I think that's it, right? Yeah. 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 So. And uh, also, uh, your, uh, we are. Yes, we have an yeah. advisory board, which is my husband, Will Cawthon, okay. Houston Helms, Scott Kincaid, who's a commissioner in town, and Lucy Penniger from the Historic Society okay. in Gastonia. Yeah, Miss, uh, Mrs. Miss Penniger has her fingers she, on a lot of historical. She knows everything. <laughs> That's exactly, uh, exactly true. So um, can you – this is a simple question, I guess, but some people might not – I am kind of described it a few minutes ago, but exactly – for our listeners, describe exactly where it is when you're coming off of, uh, I don't even know, gosh, the name of that road. Is it Cramerton Road? Cramer is that Mountain. Cramer, Cramer Mountain Road. Okay. Cramer Mountain Road. So um, exactly where, so in, in, when, you, when you turn in there, where exactly is the church, uh, excuse me, the school located? Uh, once you turn on Baltimore Drive, and, and it's the second building on the right okay. as you come up into the neighborhood. It's the second building on the right. It's the American flag. flag on I the saw flag that on the board. video, yeah. Yeah, and so it's, that's the building. How many homes roughly in, in the Baltimore Village do you, do you know? Uh, not right off. I would, I would say it's about 24, 24 maybe. 24, yeah. Okay. About 24. So as you've gone through this process, is there something you could point out that, I mean, that you're most proud of accomplishing or proud of getting to this point, or is it simply – that you've stopped the bleeding and, and now you're kind of moving forward with the next next phase of it. Well, we were what we're doing. We're doing is preserving a piece of history. It is the only one room school left in the whole county. It's a jewel. Yeah. Uh, that we're trying to preserve for the crown of the Gaston County crown. Um, knowing that, uh, we hope it'll it'll be on a historical tour. Okay. You know that people be able to come and. And see how it, kids were educated about a hundred years ago in a one-room school. And eight, eight, eight grades taught by one teacher, and that would, had to be an undertaking. And for someone, because there's kids to leave there and, and have a successful life, with a, like I would, I would consider a second, second-hand education in a one-room school uh, like that, and to be able to venture out with us and, and have a successful life. Very, I think, very undertaking. Uh, oh, sure. Uh, you know, especially in the time, especially in the time frame that yes. that, was, that was occurring. Can you? Um, I have the luxury. I've, I've watched the video and, and read a lot on the on the website. Can you maybe talk a little bit about uh, the Kramer family in, in involvement? I think you know Mr. Kramer yeah. and Mrs. Kramer both. Mrs. I Kramer. think Mrs. Kramer especially. I think was involved with with the school some. Very, very involved. Community, not only just the school, but right. the community. I understand now that, uh, it was a, a resident that lived right beside her, Mrs. Kramer's uh, maid, Mrs. Mabel Tate. Okay. Um, that the reason we got paved roads at that time, because it was a dirt road, as Mrs. Kramer uh, uh, came down to see her maid. And sometimes she, you would see her sitting on the porch with her maid sitting there talking and Banks, who uh, I remember him, he was a chauffeur in that <laughs> station wagon with those dogs. And they got stuck up there, and she said, that would never happen again. She said, we're going to have this room paid. <laughs> she said, they got stuck, you know, yeah. up there with, on the side of the street where sometimes it had rained. That's, that's how things happen, right? Yeah. Sometimes you but solve a said, problem. Gonna, you know, I understand that was the reason we got paved roads in there. But she was a very, very kind woman, uh, and a, a woman of her status. On that time, to see her sitting there with her maid on her front porch, and Miss Tate with her maid talking to her maid was right. all very uncommon during those times. So uh, yeah, since she was very instrumental in making sure that we had uh, that Christmas uh, with Santa Claus, and I could say Fred Kerber, the singing cowboy, and he would ride in on his horse, uh, <laughs> and you can hear him coming up the the, the road there. Yeah. We thought he rode the horse all the way from Charlotte. But <laughs> <laughs> what they would do is park the, the trail over there on the main, on the Freeman Mountain Road. Yeah. He would ride in, you know, sing, <laughs> sing it with his guitar with that horse. And, you know, for kids, and we thought he was, we had the equivalent of Hopalong Cassidy. Oh, yeah. You know, back then, Hopalong Cassidy was one of the, one of our heroes 
Yep, absolutely. Cowboy. So we had Fred Kirby up there with him. So, uh, so what do you see? You know, so going forward now. So what's next? What is the you know? Is there? Do you have a time frame? I mean, obviously that's a, would be a bad question, but you know what? What's next? Um, what do you? What are the needs of the organization? And you know, just kind of share. Um, what are you trying to accomplish in the near, specifically in the near future? So we have just started our fundraising campaign. Okay. So obviously funds are our greatest need right now. Gotcha. Um, we were, or Mr. Glenn was just awarded the Stedman Incentive Grant. Um, he accepted that award up in Wake Forest, and that was a $15,000 grant oh, wow. for okay. the, the project. It started out as a $10,000 grant, but they said because of the nature of the project, they increased it to fifteen, which was... An incredible honor for Mr. Glenn and for the school itself. But right now, fundraising is the biggest thing that we, we are looking at. Is there a time frame that you'd like to be able to get some things accomplished, or is it really just we'll do what we can when we can? Well, as soon as possible, if not sooner. Understood. Gotcha. <laughs> but we are, yeah. like, um, like when you're saying that we have a, uh, a donation, we're reaching out to the community. And we would like for them to help us, uh, whether they're volunteering or monetarily, uh, to help us put this thing together. We'll see. One of the laws of physics say it takes more energy to set a motion, object in motion to maintain that motion. So this is where we are now. Oh, that's a good point. <laughs> and that's where we are now. You know, a journey of a thousand miles, we didn't want a single step, and this is this is where we are. We're just reaching out to the community. And we would love to have them involved, uh, helping us with this project. And like I said, it's a jewel. For the crown of sure. Gaston, Gaston County crown, and to preserve that jewel, we, it takes all of us. This question maybe is for is for both of you. So you're looking ahead. The school has been restored. It's a, a museum, or however it's being utilized. I mean, why? Um, so for our listeners, why would you know, Gaston County, Cramerton, Gaston County in general, be better off because this work this work has been done? Maybe start with you, Mr. Glenn. And what what? What's going to be the benefit to it? It's obvious if it's because of research I've done and listening to you speak even before we started recording. I think it's pretty obvious to me after talking with you. But maybe something. How how would you, how would you share that with our our our, our listeners? How it would benefit Gaston County? Yeah. Oh, uh, just let's take uh, for instance, like have you ever walked on the beach? Yes. Okay. At low tide. Yes. Okay. You leave footprints in the in the sand, right? Yes, sir. And as high tide comes along, uh, you're leaving footprints in the sand at low tide. You can look back and see your footprints. And when high tide comes along, it wipes out all of that. That's correct, yes. And this is what is happening now with all this modernization. Mm-hmm. And we're saving uh, the school is just like leaving a footprint in a low tide. And uh, one day this school is going to be on the, the historical tour. Okay. So Gaston County is going to be on the map. <laughs> okay. Yes, sir. Well, anything you would add to that? or, or? I would just say that, you know, in Gaston County, we're not great at saving some of our historic properties. Right. Um, progress is great, but it also erases the past. And in order to move forward, we need to know what our past was. And, I mean, obviously this was not my history, but it was Mr. Glenn's history and a lot of people's history in Gaston County. Um, there were seven one-room schoolhouses to begin with. This is the only one left. Wow, okay. So I think it would just... Just that fact is, is yeah, important. Yeah, I mean, it would serve Gaston County in that it would help people understand where they came from. Yeah. And not only that, it's the only, from my understanding, it's the only historical building in the town of Creamer. Yes. Really? It's the first one. First one. That was, that was the first step of getting this preserved is... Cramerton had to join the historical preservation group in Gaston County. Um, they had never been a member, so we had to get them installed into that so a piece of property could be preserved. There are other pieces of property that sure. should be right. on the registry, but right now they're not. Okay. So this is the first and only. And it also, I think, it, it qualifies for the National Registry. Okay. Mm-hmm. So it's going to be not only – local but national not only statewide but nationally uh, it would qualify for the national historical yes we have a company out of chicago that is willing to help us pro bono get 
not only the school, but the entire village on the National Registry. So it would be part of the National Park Service if it's approved. Yeah, I would also think from a, you know, I'm, I'm a lifelong Gaston County resident, and uh, until I until recently in looking into this, I didn't even know the village was there. Right. If, you know, I, 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 and so I think another point for me is just bringing awareness to our county that this little village is there and, um, to your point, a hidden gem there. Yes. And we've, we've been lucky on these previous 67 episodes. We've had a few episodes, not quite like this one, <laughs> but, but similar where I, I've learned something that I just didn't know before, and, and even being a, a lifelong uh, resident here. Well, the town of Cramerton is installing <coughs> wayfinding signs around town, and neighborhoods are now getting these monuments directing people. Right. Um, so the historic Baltimore neighborhood will now be very visible. Good. So good or bad, it will be very visible. Yeah, well, I guess that's a good point, good yes. or bad, right? And it, 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 there can be two different ways to always look at that. And um, my experience is there can often be, what's the phrase, unintended consequences sometimes, <laughs> so, uh, unintended yes. things that you can't foresee yep. when, you're, when you're doing a project like this. Um, so looking ahead, you know, even five to ten years down the road, I mean, obviously the school is, is the name of the organization, uh, but in a broader sense, with the village itself, are, are there has, has there been any discussion, been any bigger plans or anything broader, or is the school such the focus right now that that's just a kind of a silly question at this point? Well, the school is the focus, the main focus at sure. this point, and from there, you know, the village will be okay. because um, it, it's like it's been suspended in time. That whole village, even the school, after you know, just. The wood itself, you know, we had someone uh, some years ago that a historian came down and he was talking about the wood. He came from Raleigh, and he was talking about the wood. He said, if you notice this wood, you won't see any, any knots in it. Hmm. And, he, and I said, you know, uh, what is that about? He said, this school was built out of very mature trees, maybe 100, 200 year old trees. And that's why the wood is one or two hundred year, year old one tree. or two hundred year old trees a yeah. hundred years ago. Correct. Hundred <laughs> years ago, yeah, hundred years ago, and the wood is like petrified. Huh. And then you know, if you uh, we had a uh, uh, engineer to come in to make an assessment of the, of the school, and and I asked him, you know, uh, on a scale of uh, uh, one to five or eight is A to D, uh, D being the worst. Uh, what kind of condition the school is in? He said it would be a B hmm. for a school. Wow. Or any, you know, it's, it's, it's in B shape. But it's about 80%, 80-70% is still uh, preserved. We got some about 20% or so on the back has to be be restored, but the majority of the major part of the school is intact. Yeah, um, I mean, the pictures and video that I've seen, it doesn't, it doesn't jump out as just being right. some building that's about to – you know, fall in or anything, and, you know, and there's plenty of hundred year old buildings that around that are sure are in that. So and obviously it was built. That. It was built well. It, yeah, uh, yeah. Obviously, and also we had indoor. About 20, 20 years ago, that was almost unheard of an African American um, having indoor plumbing. Huh. Okay. The houses had indoor plumbing. The school right. had indoor plumbing. Had running water, toilets. Think about that. That was, yeah. a, that was amazing. Yeah, just another reason why um, uh, a, a hidden gem and a lot of, a lot of a, a, an area where again a lot of Gaston County residents are not going to be familiar with it. So, is there anything else I haven't asked or, or, or should have asked or anything else you'd like to share? We're going to you know this is a Gaston County based podcast, so we have some Gaston County based uh, ridiculous questions that we like to ask to get get a feel for. But then, but, but obviously, we'll finish up making sure we know our listeners know how to how to help, how to get involved, and, and what you guys have planned next. Any other, anything else I haven't asked, though, that I should have asked? Or anything uh, like well, to share uh, before we move on? We ask the community to get involved with this. Absolutely. Uh, I, I see this as a, uh, a kid in school doing a paper. If he or uh, she wants to do a paper or uh, essay, this would be a good opportunity. Oh, sure. It would be a good opportunity to jump on board with this. And any volunteers that are looking to... Uh, have something to write down, I don't know, to get in college or something like okay, that. Okay, yeah. You'd be surprised what this can do because we have the information. We have the people who give it. 
all the history of it, and information that they can follow us on on uh, Facebook, on, on with our uh, blog, uh, okay. and the progress of the school, and anything that needs to uh, you know jump on board with this with the community and donate your t- time and uh, your your money and and make this thing happen. You know, it's, it's going to be part of it. You be part of, it, of something that's. Uh, We'll be here for another 100, 200 years. Well, I'm, in, I'm lucky to be involved with a lot of organizations, and a couple of them you know, have um, tours where, where you know, school children are taken around the county, and there's organizations like um, oh, the Leadership Gaston that tours around the county. I, w- I would assume this would be a great stop to be added to that, um, you know, to that list of, of stops that are, that are made around the county. So, um, you know, I, when, when, as this as this continues, as this work continues, I'll be interested to to make sure these organizations are, are aware of what's going down. And that's kind of the point of this right discussion today is is um, to make our three listeners uh, aware of. Um, actually, I'm kidding. We got more. We're, we're lucky that we got a few more than that. So we're going to shift gears just real quick. Um, first, I have some questions for both of you that are kind of Gaston County based. But like I said, we'll make sure the last thing we do is talk about um, talk about you know, the, the, the school and, and how people can get involved and donate or, or whatever you guys next needs. But I'm going to start with these, uh, what we call, we're going to call them the Cramerton round, speed round of questions this week um, because of the Cramerton connection. But Mr. Glenn, I'm going to start with you. I'm assuming being a, a longtime Gaston County resident, you've been to Tony's Ice Cream? Oh, most definitely. All right, so what's your favorite Tony's Ice Cream flavor? Let's go back to the 60s. Okay. Okay, I know you ain't born then. But Not quite. I was, <laughs> I, I, I was born in 1970. <laughs> okay, well, so, Tony, we were stopping there and get this bologna sandwich. Okay. I know you're talking about ice cream. No, it's, All it's, right. it's, But they made the best bologna sandwich. The bologna would be about a half inch thick. <laughs> and they put that chili on it. And oh, that, man. <laughs> and that, that was in the 60s. Now, moving forward, the banana split. Uh, uh, vanilla ice cream. Okay. Yeah, that's my favorite. Very but that, good. But that bologna sandwich. So they don't make bologna sandwiches, sandwiches, bologna sandwiches like that anymore, no, do no, they? No, no, no. Inflation and uh, yeah. everything else. It's just I a, mean, thin, it a, a, thin, a thin slice of nothing. <laughs> or it was a half-inch thick piece of bologna. You oh, you man. Get. Maybe and they, go, would, they would shave it off right there. You would make me want to go eat at lunch at Tony's today. <laughs> right. Wendy, what about you? Black cherry. Black yeah. cherry. Yeah, that's Boring. that's been a pretty uh, popular answer. Wendy, stick with you. Sundrop or cheer wine? Cheer wine. Cheer wine. Cheer wine. I mean, that's mine, too, those two. Mr. Glenn, favorite local restaurant? Jack Sa- Jack, uh, Jackson. Uh, Jackson's Cafeteria? Jackson Cafeteria. Cafeteria. Oh, yeah. yeah. Good old Southern style cooking. Yes. Can't and get away with it. Can't you, get away with it. You don't find that very often. Oh, no, you don't have fancy cooking. I don't, you just give me the old chicken and the Southern fried. <laughs> Man, I'm gonna have to get this out. We, we do get done here about lunchtime. So <laughs> right. I'm going to be ready by the time we finish here. Wendy, yeah. what about you? Ray Nathan's. Ray Nathan's Love is the great. Barbecue. Yeah, you know what? And they they've been good to the community They're good as well. People. Yeah, they sure they sure are. Uh, Wendy, how about your favorite outdoor activity in Gaston County, or favorite park, or Goat Island? I'm from Cramerton. Yeah, yeah. Goat, Goat Island's terrific. Yeah, Goat Island and uh, uh, the park was uh, Rankin 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 Lake. Rankin, is, yeah, Rankin, Rankin, Rankin Lake. Goat Island's cool. first. But uh, speaking about Goat Island. Growing up in Cramerton, you know, fishing. Yep. The Cramers would put goats. You would be fishing, and you look at the goats across the river, and they put them over there to keep the vegetation. Oh, wow. Okay. <laughs> to keep the vegetation down. So that's how it came. That's how it became Goat back Island? In the 50s to the 40s, the goats was over there on that island. That's funny. And it became Goat Island. You know. Yeah, I might have to. I might have questioned yeah. both of you if you didn't say Goat Island on that one. So you know, You'd probably get in trouble. Good. So um, I'm gonna, this is my que- this is my question that I throw in here every single week, and I uh, don't really care what anybody else says about this question. But uh, Mr. Glenn, uh, I don't know if you're a college sports fan or anything, but I'm gonna ask anyway. UNC Duke or NC State? First of all, I had to give a, give out the North Carolina's NT State University. A and T is a great university. First of all. Yeah. That's first. You know, that's the school I went to. Aggies are great. Every and school. North Carolina State, I, we, my wife and I sent a lot of money up there because our daughter graduated from North Carolina State. Well, she so, must be a good soul. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah, she is. <laughs> that's where so I went. You did, is that's that right? the, that's the <laughs> only correct answer to this question. <laughs> We're really. in the best. Oh, see, I knew that. <laughs> 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 so 
You know, our daughter, we put we invested a lot of money up there yeah. in, in North Carolina State, a great school. Yeah, well, very good. I, I knew you were a good man when I saw you. <laughs> Wendy, what about you? I grew up in upstate South Carolina, so technically Clemson. Okay. Well, but Clemson's if I had to right. choose, I'd say state. Uh, that's a good answer. Again, this is – anytime we can – not have to hear the other two answers. It's a good episode <laughs> of this of this podcast. But you know, A and T, uh, Clemson are very similar schools. NC State and what they offer in their their curriculum. So I appreciate that. Wendy, I'll stick with you on this one. What is something very few people know about you? I'm incredibly shy. <laughs> this is like yeah. really difficult for me. Even though there's only four people here. Well, you're doing you're doing well. Luckily, you know, we didn't tell you about the live video feed that's going that's on okay. right now. That's <laughs> okay. I am aware. <laughs> there is no live video feed, but we are recording, by the way. Um, Mr. Glenn, what about you? Something very few people know Well, about. a lot of people think I'm uh, outgoing, but really, uh, I spend most of my time by myself. Okay. Ninety uh, percent of the time, I'm by myself. To keep, I'm, I'm a nature person, I, and that's the only way I can hear nature is because there's so much stuff going on now and around you too. Yeah. You just uh, it's hard to disconnect these days, back, isn't it? That's why I come to, to Baltimore, and it's so uh, quiet over there. And I garden over there every month. Every month. Where I was born and raised in that house, I I, I come back here to uh, to get in touch with nature. Sure, yeah. Just I, listen to the birds. And I understand. Stuff. That's a lot of people don't realize. I'm most of the time I'm by myself. Well, I would um, something I, we mentioned earlier about. Being fr- you know, the village being frozen in time, so to speak. You know, I'm a huge fan of uh, Andy Griffith show, <laughs> oh, yeah. and, I, and I think one of the reasons is it seems just like a, I don't know, a different time, a slower time. You know, it's so hard to disconnect these days, and now some of it for me personally is self inflicted. You know, um, but even you know, I try to even set my phone to the side on occasion. But uh, I remember distinctly one of my favorite episodes of Andy Griffiths when, was when the, the minister had the guest minister and he was talking about slowing down, you know, and, and, and it's okay to sit on the porch on a Sunday afternoon, you know, yeah. with, your, with your family and just uh, just disconnect and and, uh, and and nature should be a big part of that. So so I appreciate that. Yeah, I always like uh, Andy Griffin. I always like the barbershop scene. Oh, yeah. Uh, well, what's the guy? Floyd. Floyd. Yeah, Floyd was real laid back. Well, one of my most proud things about being a parent is, you know, my kids grew up in the time of Barney the Dinosaur. Well, when my kids were talking about Barney, they weren't talking about Barney the Dinosaur. They were talking about Barney Fife. So, <laughs> so that was uh, maybe maybe one of the – maybe maybe I got some part of parenting right where they were more uh, into Barney Fife as opposed to Barney the Psychotic Dinosaur. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm talking about, Naomi? Barney the Dinosaur? I know what it is, but I never watched it. Oh, okay. You're, but that would be about your – time when you grew up that would be about right for barring the dinosaur being popular sorry we got off track there Wendy what about a, a blog a book or anything you might recommend uh, we we said a blog article anything that w- it might be worth sharing for our, our readers so I mean, I our just, listeners excuse me I mean I spend a lot of time in my car um, going back and forth to work to my parents so yep. I don't get a lot of time to read but I do listen to books and I just finished a, a great one called apples never fall and it's kind okay. of a, a mystery thriller Apples never fall. Okay, it's by the same person that did Big Little Lies. Gotcha, Mr. Glenn. What about you? Well, last book I re- read was by uh, Octavia Butler, okay. called "The Parable of the Soul," and it's a science fiction. And I like science fiction. I'm into that kind of. I love that kind of stuff. So it was uh, Octavia Butler's okay. "Parable of the Soul." We appreciate you sharing that. I mean, I'm a big reader, and I'm, you know, into your point I'm when I'm in the car I'm listening to podcasts or books on audio or something uh, all the time I don't remember the last time I listened to the only time I ever listened to the radio if I'm in the car if an NC State athletic event happens to be on the radio that might be the only time I listen to the radio anymore um, so listen, I appreciate kind of indulging us on those Gaston County questions um, so just a couple more questions and we'll be we'll be finished up here so when I'm going to start with you on this one you know besides the Baltimore Village School and Baltimore Village why would you say Gaston County is such a great place? I think Gaston County has some of the most caring and involved citizens I've seen. I mean, I'm involved in a lot of different organizations, and it always amazes me how easy it is to get people on board with what you're doing. They just they just want to help. Yeah, so I w- I w- it's, I w- it's pretty I would agree. impressive. And that's been my experience yeah. as well. Mr. Glenn, how would you answer that question? How, why is Gaston County? Such a great place. Well, Gaston County gave me 
I say a springboard. And the reason I say that is because I went off to service. I came back and went to Gaston College. You know, so I worked at home like chainsaw manufacturer. I did my four-year apprenticeship at home like tool and dial maker, Gaston County, mechanic engineer, technology machinist. So Gaston County gave me a springboard. So not only just growing up in the county and leaving and coming back and, and getting a, an education uh, so we have a, a decent life, uh, a productive life. And it's, it all started right here, even with that bologna sandwich <laughs> <laughs> at, at, at Tony's. That's absolutely. Yeah, the bologna sandwich. I still can taste that bologna sandwich. Man, I might have to go find me a fried bologna sandwich after this. My goodness. So, Gaston County has been I don't real instrumental. For dinner. If I don't get it for lunch, I don't want to have it for dinner tonight when <laughs> yeah. I get home. So, Gaston County has been very instrumental, and, it, it, and, it's, uh, and it's growing. And like when you say the people here are very generous and very, it's a different, it's a different type of atmosphere, you know, right. like a right. still down home atmosphere right. than Charlotte. You know, you still have that. You go in the restaurants here, and people are friendly, right? You know, and they're just talking to each other. You know, hey, how you doing? It's, it's, it's a different. It just let you feel at home. Well, I agree, and, and I appreciate that. So, again, uh, one last one last question, and I'm going to start with you on this one, Mr. Glenn. No one, no one, what you know now. What what advice? This is for our listeners, especially. But what advice would you give your 20 year old self? Twenty years old, I was in Vietnam. <laughs> wow. <laughs> what advice would I give myself if I was twenty years old? Knowing what you know now, yes, sir. Oh, that's a. Oh, well, uh, I was. I should have been from Tennessee because I was a volunteer for a lot of stuff. <laughs> <laughs> I volunteered for a program called Shotgunners to go to Vietnam and become a dough gunner in Vietnam. Okay. I, when I got there, I thought I had made the, the worst mistake <laughs> in my life because I had watched movies. And I thought war was sport according to the way that I saw on the movies, like uh, Rat Patrol and Combat. And, you know, it was, I said, man, this is going to be easy when we train in Hawaii in the jungle training. And when I got to Vietnam, I I thought that was the worst decision I have ever made in my life. Yes, but sir. looking back, it was one of the best decisions that mm. I made in my life. Looking on coming on this side of it. But when I was there, I thought, I say, what in the world did I get myself into? But since I was able to survive that, thank God, it was only one of the best decisions. But at the time it was twenty years old, I thought it was the worst decision. Is, you, is it fair to say that you know, looking back you're able to see what you learned from that experience and how it kind of Molded you maybe a little bit. First or? of all, we live in one of the, we live in the best country in the world. Yes, sir. I that's appreciate the, you saying that. That's the first thing. And I learned to not get hung up on tribute stuff. Right. Uh, because we can walk over and turn a flip a light. It's wild. On, yes, sir. And the light comes turn out. Turn a faucet on and water comes out. The water comes out. Typically clean water. Clean water. Typically, yes. Because the water in our commode is cleaner than the water in a lot of yes, sir. country. So I learned to appreciate that being on that perspective, yep. perspective of being on foreign soil. And just not to take anything for granted. The sm- the mo- several things in life are the most important things. In yes, sir. And I learned that. Well, very good. I appreciate that greatly. Sorry, Wayne, you got to follow that. No. Follow that one. How would you I'm, I'm used to living in his shadow these days. <laughs> um, so I think for me, it would just be be willing to say yes to new experiences. Okay, yeah. Because you never know what your passion is going to be. And, you know, don't let anxiety and fear hold you back. Yeah, when I was 20, everything seemed so, I don't know, small or something. You know, yes. I was so concerned about what people were going to think. And, yes. You know, if I was going to make a mistake or whatever. You know, now it's like. I've made so many mistakes that it just doesn't matter much anymore. But yeah, that's a great one. I mean, that's a I I knew I know nothing about preserving a historic African American school, <laughs> but it's not going to stop me. I'll find somebody who does. Well, that, you know, that's what it takes. You know, it's um. Well, yeah, why not you? Right. You know exactly. I think that's somebody's got to do it. I think that's a question that a lot of people do answer 
um, in our community when things need to get done. Why not me? Why can't I be the one to, to help Absolutely. with that or lead that? Or, you know, why can't we have a podcast to talk about good things happening around Gaston County? You know, I mean, I've had people ask me, well, what? You, you do what? Well, we're a podcast and we part time do air conditioning work around the county. <laughs> And some roofing and some gutters yeah. and some. Yeah, I mean, so I, I, I appreciate that. So uh, this has really been good. So before we kind of swing swing back to talk about how people get involved, first I just want to thank both of you. I mean, you guys are doing some really good work in the community, and uh, it makes a difference. It makes an impact. And, Mr. Glenn, specifically with you, I mentioned this before we started recording, but I appreciate your service to to, to our country, and, and I appreciate your perspective on, on our country, which I, I would um, – I, I'm inspired by – when I hear people uh, in, with your perspective that I do not have, that, that I was unable to, to have, but uh, I didn't have it thanks to people like you. <laughs> so, right. so, and, and so I, I, I greatly uh, admire that and, and, and appreciate that. Um, so again, the most important thing for, for today is bringing awareness to, to the village and the school. And so how can our listeners go find out more information? Uh, where can they, you know, get there's donate, uh, get involved, just how can they, just kind of share if you can. Either one of you, just what you want to share about how how, how that can happen. They can go to our website and uh, they can donate. Or they can get involved. This is the web. This is the pamphlet here. It's historicbaltimoreschool.org. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Historicbaltimoreschool.org. And just to re- that, it, if you got time to go to the website, I would encourage you to watch the video. That's on the website. It's. 12 minutes or so and but it's really it's really worth uh we're really worth the time watching it and And we're also on facebook and instagram under baltimore village school okay very good so is there is it happen to be is there an email address or anything that or if there isn't that's fine i just baltimore village school at gmail.com okay we're trying to keep it simple perfect perfect yeah and we have different giving levels and there's also going to be opportunities for people to be hands-on you know we want the community involved every way we can get them absolutely So any, any last words of wisdom before we close this episode out? Yes, I'd like to, first of all, thank my wife. Uh, <laughs> for, 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 <laughs> thank my wife for putting up with me. I understand. <laughs> Next month will be 55 years. Oh, wow. I'd like to take Good my hat off to you. her. Good and for the, you. Yeah, yeah. And my, <laughs> hey, look, every, if you think about a coach, he's only good as you know, his coaches around him. That's correct. Head coach. And I like to take off, take my hat off to my my coaches, <laughs> uh, Will and Wendell Carlton, uh, the Hams, uh, Houston Anita Hams, uh, Dr. Reverend Crawford for opening up Center Baptist Church for, to, for our meetings and his involvement, uh, Melvina Booker, who's a longtime resident and a classmate of mine. In fact, uh, some years ago when we graduated, well, 60 years ago, we graduated from Reed High School in, in Belmont. And, John Howard, who's on, as a board, on our board. Right. So these are the, the, the coaches that help me. You know, I'm just the. It's rarely an individual yeah, effort. Yeah, yeah. So it's uh, it's, it's, it's it's my coaches. But it also takes somebody coaches. with a vision and some inspiration exactly. to get that put that team together. And one as well. And, and, and you always have to have one with a cape on. <laughs> you got to just get the cape. I got you. you. Know, this is. The superhero of the yeah, group, the huh? superhero. Yeah, and uh, I never knew that she said she was shy. I, I, I had no idea. I had no idea, but uh, she, she hides it real good if she is. That's, that's, that's my superhero here. Well, shy and introverts can do a lot of stuff, but it's my experience, because I'm the same way, naturally, it's just exhausting. It just, it just drains you. It just drains <laughs> Yeah, it drains us. So we just need to... Make sure we take a little break every now and then. Yeah, because you feel like you're out of your element zone. Like after we every episode, after we record every episode, I'm about ready to go take a nap. (laughs) (laughs) We you would never know it. Well, thank you, uh, Mr. Glenn. So, again, I I appreciate it. Uh, Any, I'm sorry, Wendy. Any last anything you'd like to add? But he he pretty covered it pretty well. Mr. Glenn's the heart and soul behind this project. The rest of us are just the organizers and the the process people. Well, very good. I just keep my heart beating. They don't want to keep my. I'm not just. I'm, I'm just out front. I'm just kind of. Uh, these are what. These are the one who drives it. You know, my, my board of directors and my advisors. I'm. I'm them. 
I'm a, they, they, right. they are the one who makes me. And all I had, all I did was just stop the bleeding. <laughs> that's what that's what I did. I just waited till the medics got. Well, there. I'm looking. I'm really looking forward to um, you know, seeing seeing how this work comes along, and and hopefully, hopefully, someone or more than one person will hear this and and be inspired to to help in in, in some way. Again, that's kind of what we're trying to to accomplish. That, and you know what? Maybe you know. I don't know. Maybe in the future, if if for some reason we're able to get to episode number two hundred. And the work is being finished up. We'd love to you know, get great. you guys back on and talk about the, the progress yeah. and, and kind of what's going on at, at, at that point. So um, I, I appreciate your, your time, Gray. So like I do every week, I'm going to finish up with my own book recommendation and my kind of quote or thought for the week. And I picked one of a book I read several years ago, and I did it on purpose for this episode. Uh, John Maxwell is somebody I, I kind of follow and admire. He's kind of considered the leadership guru here in, in the States, and um, he wrote a book. He's wrote a lot of leadership books. Uh, but one I read a few years ago is called Leadership Gold, and uh, I think it kind of some of the some of the topics in there might apply to what I've heard, some of what I heard today. And I picked my quote uh, for the week uh, uh, kind of on the same after kind of reading up on what the work being done uh, over in Cramerton. And this comes from William Penn, and he said, to have striven, to have made the effort, to have been true to certain ideals, this alone is worth the struggle. So for me, that kind of seemed to, to match up with kind of some of the work you guys are doing. And, um, you know, it, 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 it does take the effort. And, and sometimes the effort is worth um, the struggle, so to speak. And I think if, um, how can I put it, politi- be politically correct and say maybe we could use a little more of that um, maybe in our, our society today that, we have to have people doing hard things sometimes to, to get things done. So um, to our listeners, thanks so much for taking the time to listen to today's episode. Please, spread, please continue to spread the word if you can about the podcast. And please don't hesitate to contact us here at our email, which is podcast at gastonsgreat.com. We're always looking for suggestions for future podcast, to- podcast topics and guests. You can find the podcast and subscribe at the website, gastonsgreat.com struggling today, Naomi, or anywhere you listen to podcasts. Please follow us on all our social media platforms as well. And give us a good five-star rating if you can, because that helps us get noticed. And thanks again to Fred Glenn and Wendy Coffin for being our guests today. Gaston's Great is produced and brought to you by Naomi Hunt and Amy Anderson from GSM Services and edited here locally by the Sumner Group. I'm your host, Stephen Long. Thanks again for hanging out with us, and please keep coming back to hear more reasons why Gaston's Great. (laughs) 